Hey kids, it's Papa. You ready to explore the Bible? All right. Take your Bibles and turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. Now, we're going to start a series of stories that tell us about the life of Elisha and some of the things that God used him to do. And they're kind of neat stories. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, in 2 Kings chapter 4, we read the story of, uh, well, uh, of Elisha and a widow woman. Okay, notice it says in verse 1, Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Now first of all, let's stop and talk about who this woman is. There's two things that we know about her. Well, there's a bunch of things we know about her. First of all, we know that she's a widow. In other words, her husband has died. Let me ask you, what does the Bible say about widows? The Bible says that widows and orphans that have lost those that are taking care of them, if they will look to God, God will take care of them. And we find that not only throughout the Bible, but throughout history, I've seen it in my own life, how that God takes care of widows and God takes care of orphans. Um, if they will but look to him, if they will but just rely upon him, it's amazing what he will do for those who can't take care of themselves. Anyway, this widow woman comes. Notice also, not only was she a widow woman, but she was of one of the uh, daughters, notice it says, uh, wives of the sons of the prophets. Okay, in other words, her husband had been a son of the prophet. In other words, he had been a servant of God. And doubly, God takes care of the uh, dependents of those who have served him. And so we find here that God says, okay, I will take care of you. Now, notice how he does it. It's neat. It says, um, thy servant, my husband, uh, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take him, my two sons, to be bondmen. Okay, in other words, she owed money. Uh, okay, she borrowed money and couldn't pay it back. And, uh, and, and now she is afraid because the creditor said, well, the only way you can pay me is to give me your sons. Now, in, in Jewish tradition, if you couldn't pay a debt, then you would go into uh, a seven-year bondage. Now, this basically means you come and work for me for seven years, okay? And, uh, you, or until you pay off your debt. Um, and the idea was that she then would be free to, you know, try and make some money and pay off the debt so that the sons could go free. But if she couldn't, then those sons would work for that creditor for seven years. By the way, sometimes this was actually a good thing. Uh, and there were times when people would be in debt and they would actually intentionally sell themselves and their family to someone else for seven years so that they could pay off that debt. Uh, and, and so it, it wasn't entirely a bad thing, and yet it was something that she realized, I'm going to lose control of the blessings of my son. And so she, um, she came and she cried out to the prophet Elisha. And uh, Elisha said, verse 2, Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? And he, Tell me what thou hast in thy house. And she said, Thine handmaiden hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. All I have is just one pot of oil. This, we're not sure if this was cooking oil or if this was oil for lamps to burn uh, because they didn't have electricity and you know, I flip a switch. No, they didn't have that. They had lamps with a wick and they would burn uh, the oil and the oil would flow up the wick and the oil would burn and it would light there. So we're not sure if it was cooking oil. I uh, remember the woman that took care of Elijah. Uh, that was cooking oil. This may be cooking oil, or this may be uh, burning oil. Um, not sure which, but uh, that's all she had, just one pot of oil. So notice what happens. Uh, he says in verse 3, Go, borrow the, uh, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. In other words, get a lot of them. 
okay? Uh, and when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out unto all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. <clears throat> um, and, and that's basically all he told her. So she's thinking, what's going to happen? Now, here's the thing. There are times when we don't know what's going to happen. And when those times happen, we'd better just don't do what God tells us to do. And we'd better do it exactly as God tells us to do. And so notice what happens. Uh, verse 5. So she went from him. She shut the door upon all her sons and uh, her and her sons uh, who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out. And it came to pass that when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet another vessel. And he said unto her, There is not another vessel. And the oil stayed. Now apparently it was actually coming up in the pot. And she's, she's got this one pot of oil, and she's filling up all of these other pots with it. And, you know, and, and it's still full. And so she's pouring, and she looks, and it's, the level's coming up. She says, Quick, bring me another pot. And she's pouring it in, and she fills up that pot, and she sees the level's coming up. She says, Bring me another pot. And so she does, and, and she's, she's filling up all of these pots, all of these vessels. And then finally she says, okay, bring me another one. And they say, there aren't any more. And she looks and it stops coming up. Huh. In other words, she had enough. She's got all of these vessels full of oil. And this was valuable stuff. So what happens? Well, notice in verse uh, 7, it says, then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and thou and live thou on the rest, uh, and thy children with the rest. In other words, okay, you've got all of these vessels full of oil. Now, you've got to give the vessels back to the people you got them from, but you can go and you can sell all the oil that's in them and then return the pots. And that's exactly what she did. And she had enough money from the sale of all that oil to pay off the debt and enough to live on for her and for her sons. What a beautiful story. Now, I want you to think this through for a moment. She believed the prophet. She believed God. And she went and got all of those pots. What would happen if she had gotten more pots? Would God have been upset? Would he have said, Poof! can't fill all of those pots. No, God would have filled all of those pots. No matter how many pots, she could have filled that house up completely and God could have filled all of those pots. So why didn't she? I don't know. Maybe she was limited by the number of pots she could get her hands on. Maybe she did the best she could. Or maybe she didn't know what was going to happen and she didn't have enough faith. We don't know. All we do know is that she was able to pay off that debt and have enough to live on. But what can we learn from this? Well, let me put it to you this way. When God makes a promise, we need to realize that he's not limited as to how he can answer that promise. And so let us act in boldness and claim it all. Yeah, let's believe it all. Let's believe God's promises and claim it all all. Is God going to get upset? No. <laughs> Matter of fact, he wants us to claim it all. And so when God makes us a promise, let's claim it all. Hey, love you guys. See you later. Bye.